All right. Shalom. This is the brother Raya coming in the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. But before I get started, as always, I'm going to give all praises, glory, and infinite honors to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Rakah Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule and teach well and whom I learned this truth from. And peace and salutations to you, sincere Akiam out there, pushing this word and truth and sincerity to the four corners of the globe. May you brothers endure until the end. Shalom. Another Saturday, another day of prophesying against this wicked kingdom of uh, America, which is biblically known as Babylon the Great, under these uh, the biblical Edomites, known as these so-called white people. But in today's lesson, what we're going to be getting into is the fact that there is no such thing as free will. You may think that the thoughts that come to your head are your own thoughts, or the movements that you make in society are your own movements, but no, that is not the case. Everything is through the will of the Most High. This is his movie, and we're all just actors playing our part in it, which hey, it can be terrifying and, and a relief at the same time. Terrifying in the sense that hey, even though you may uh, be in the truth, and you may be able to hey, believe it in the name Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, doing everything you can to stain his good graces, you could not be of that elect number ultimately. Just look at Judas Iscariot, for example. He was originally of the 12, but it wasn't his lot to uh, stay with the 12. It was his lot to betray Yahweh Shai and fall out. And as King David said, hey, I pray to you in Psalms 51, I pray that the Most High doesn't take his spirit off of me. So hey, that, that keeps us in fear that even though there's no free will, hey, we just do what we can to uh, please Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai and hope that we... Uh, that we're ultimately of that lot to make it to the end. And it's also a relief at the same time because on the flip side, if you are of that elect number, you were destined to be of that elect number from the beginning and nothing will happen to take you off the path. And also anything that takes place in your life, bad circumstances, loved ones dying, you losing a job, anything like that, it's all through the will of the most high, whatever that may be for it building you up and strengthening you as a man or a woman of the Lord or, uh, or breaking you down and leading you to judgment. But without any further ado, let's get into these precepts showing that there is no free will, that everything is preordained by Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. And mosquitoes, I'm going to put my jacket on real quick. Lock you. All right, we're going to start it off in Jeremiah chapter 10, verses 23. O Yahweh, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. Point blank, period. It is not in, in man himself to direct his own steps. It's through the will of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, that directs your steps. It's the it's Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai that brought me out here today to prophesy. It's Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai that if you come across this video, you came across it by whatever means to watch it. Hey, other brothers out prophesying, putting up video epistles. Even these people out here uh, celebrating this rainy Saturday. It's through the will of the Most High that they're out there for whatever reason it may be. Now I'm going to jump to Job 33, uh, verse 15, real headbuster. In a dream, 
in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumberings upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men and sealeth their instruction. So even before this day took place, the Most High set out the path everybody was going to walk today. Hey, as I said, in your sleep, and you seal it your instruction. And when we go to sleep tonight, whatever tomorrow may bring, it was sealed the previous night. But regardless, as we're seeing, there is no free will. It's all through the will of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, that we all play our parts in prophecy. That he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. And if you can understand that there is no free will, that definitely does take pride out of you. Because everything we do, you get a new job and make extra money, get a new car, meet somebody, anything like that. It wasn't through your own strength, through your own volition. It was through the will of Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. And just as easily as you got it, the Most High can as easily take it away. Which uh, reminds me, hopefully I can find it. But... There's a perfect account. I believe it's maybe in Romans. Slakia. Maybe in Peter's. Here it is, perfect. Hey, call hello, you how by Shimmy I'll shy that I found it. This is in James chapter four. I'm gonna start it. Start at verse 13. Just to back up that Job chapter 33, verse uh, 17, where it says that he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. And like I was saying, when you understand that there's no free will, that really does take pride from you because just as easily as you could come into something good is as easily as you could be taken out of it. It's all through the will of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, and whatever purpose he has for it. And as it also said in verse 17, that he may withdraw man from his purpose. You may have woken up today or whenever and had a whole game plan in your mind, but everything just didn't go as, as according to plan or completely fell apart. That was because it was not ordained by the Most High for that day to play out how you had it in your mind. But this is James chapter 4, verse 13. Go to now, ye that say, today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain in the purposes you may have. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? Hey, I know it's not in man within himself to direct his steps. As it said in uh, Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 23, it's all through the will of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. Hey, whenever you have plans or purposes coming into your mind, hey, just think to yourself, hey, Yahweh willing, Abaratazah, that these things may come to pass. Because again, nobody knows what, what tomorrow may bring. Hell, what the next five minutes could bring, especially with me being by myself here or anybody. It reminds me of a scene in a one of those Thor movies where Thor was talking to Idris Elba's character and he was going to fight some enemies and he was like, I have no plans on dying today, just being prideful. And Idris Elba's character told him, no man does. Hey, perfect statement. Nobody plans on dying the day that they die on. But if that's your time to get your ticket called, your ticket punched, that's when Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah is going to do it. And there's nothing you can do about it, which again, takes away the pride of man and it puts that fear on us to follow Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, to the best of our abilities and hope that that's our predetermined lot to follow and endure until the end and not to put your hand on the plow for a season 
and then take it off because that was the will of the Most High to do so to ultimately lead to your judgment and uh, punishment. Because we don't, we don't, of course, there's re reincarnation is biblical and we've had many past lives. And the things that we go through in this life could be a judgment from a past life. So we don't know what, how righteous or how wicked we were in a past life. So again, that takes pride from us to, in this moment, do whatever we can to please Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And again, hope that that's that lot we've been set in to be a preordained, predestinated to make it to the end. But now I'm gonna get a, another example in the Apocrypha. Not the one I'm looking for, but uh, hey, if the spirit comes on me to find it, I'll find it. But let's get back into some more precepts dealing with uh, the fact that there's no free will and everything's predestinated, preordained by Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Back in Job 33, verse 18, he keepeth back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. Again, no man knows what day he may die. And the Most High, a, every everything we go through, I could get in the car after doing this lesson and get in a car wreck and get killed. I don't know that. I could get in the car and Abarat this is the case. I get to go back home and, and upload this video and have a peaceful night. We do not know, but everything's been preordained by Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. And also, some plans you may have had, some things you wanted to do, if they fall apart, that could be because the Most High was setting up some other judgment to take place and didn't want you to be a part of it. You could have been uh, leaving the house. You were planning to meet up with somebody at this particular time, but oh, something went wrong. You had to go back into the house and fix something. You dropped a glass of water or whatever and had to clean that up. And that cost you 20 minutes. So you thought you were gonna be late. But the reason that happened is because a major wreck would have uh, major wreck happened on the place that you had to travel to to get to your destination and if you would have left at that direct time you could have been a part of it and that could have been your judgment but the most high saved you from it as i said he keepeth back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword hey it's and the more you understand these scriptures the more you realize that we're living within a, a world beneath a world a, the, a truly spiritual world out here but there are many things working behind the scenes besides what we see with our, our regular eyes, uh, daily life, which is just the, the movie playing out, but the script has already been written and taken place behind the scenes. But now I'm going to jump to Proverbs chapter 16. I'm going to start at verse 1 and jump around a bit. The preparations of the heart in man, or your mind, and the answer of the tongue, it is from Yahweh, point blank period. Whatever you're thinking and whatever speech comes out of your mouth, hey, it's all through the will of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, that those things may play out. You may have a, a good day with somebody and everything, everything it seems like you're in the top of the world in one thing, and then y'all you, you may get into a discussion or a conversation and say one thing that they get offended and completely derails everything and it goes bad hey of course in the flesh you're like man shit why did i say that why did i i, I ruin this moment but hey it's through the will of yahweh by hashem yahweh shai for whatever purposes it may be ultimately hey, you hope that it's for your betterment and, and enduring until the end uh, the brother the, the brother uh, Shamar, whose page is GMS Bread and Olive, did a video that I watched a couple of days ago saying, hey, the Most High knows what you need, even if you don't know what you need. And he was relating to it about a situation he was having with his car where everything was going wrong and it was looking like he was going to be in a bad case. But ultimately, the Most High worked things out. 
But he said, in that instance, when having to come up with all this money for the car, he had to go find a job or a, a new job that could be able to help him cover those costs. So ultimately he found out that the problem with this car was that his tires just needed pressure and it wasn't everything all these other people were telling him. So look, it ended up being an issue that cost maybe a couple of hundred dollars instead of a couple of thousand dollars. And he got a job with benefits out of it. The most high put him through that situation to ultimately uh, better him and put give him more opportunities. That's with everything we go through in this life. Things may seem down in one moment and you're like, man, I wish I would have done this or could have done that. But down the road, you'll, you may be led into a much better situation. And it's through the will of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. You just have to believe that. And hey, just keep doing everything you can to stay in the good graces of your power. Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. I'm going to jump to... Uh... What's in here? Here it is, verse 9 in Proverbs chapter 16. A man's heart deviseth his way, back in that Job 33, that he may withdraw man from his purposes. And we've all got our purposes and things we want to do here or there, but it's not through uh, our volition. It's through the will of the Most High, as it's about to say. A man's heart deviseth his way, but Yahweh directeth his steps. Hey, we're just puppets walking along to the puppeteer. As Dr. Manhattan said in Watchmen, I'm just a puppet that can see the strings. And that's what we are when we have the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. We can see the strings and understand that everything that's taking place is through the will of the Most High. We just have to look deeper into it and figure out what's the reasoning behind this. Hopefully it's for my betterment and to keep me enduring in the truth. And it's not for judgment to take me out of the truth. And I'm going to jump to uh, another verse in the Apocrypha. This is uh, Ecclesiasticus or Sirach, chapter 18. I'm going to start at verse 1. Just lock in. Take this jacket off. It's getting a little warm. Hopefully these mosquitoes leave me alone. They seem to like that melanin, so to speak. But shit, even if these mosquitoes bite me, that's even through the will of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. It's not just people that are directed. It's these animals, the trees, life, existence itself, which reminds me. A long time ago, me and a younger brother went out to eat some food at a restaurant and we got in a conversation like this about how there's no free will and the Most High has preordained everything from the beginning because when we were sitting at the table, he was looking at how the table had uh, scratches on it and the wall had some of the paint uh, scratched off. And he was saying, man, that's just how cold the Most High is. From the beginning, he already had it planned out that we would be at this restaurant and this table would be a little scuffed up and the and the paint on the wall would be a little scratched off. And even that word right there, the graffiti on these benches, this whole gazebo thing was set up through the will of the Most High. Hey, set up for me to come here and, and prophesy. And what's funny is that it says, and I, I noticed this a couple of weeks ago, it said that the Lions Club had donated to have this gazebo built this uh it was donated by the lions club of this park and it's just funny the lions club the lion of judah everything is, is is working in the spirit and power of yahweh by hashem yahweh shai as it's about to say in sirach chapter 18 he that liveth forever created all things in general the lord only is righteous and there is none other but he who governeth the world with the palm of his hand and all things obey his will point blank period.
He governeth the world with the palm of his hands and everything obeys his will. Everything that's ever taken place in existence was all preordained by the will of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai to fulfill prophecy. The flood during the days of Noah, 70 AD, World War One, World War Two, all the way up until this very day, hey, with, with putting the, the spirit on the elites of these Edomites, like the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the DuPonts, the Gettys, whoever, to bring about their NW0, their G-R-E-A-T-R-E-S-E-T, -E -E that fourth industrial revolution, and to get everybody Karagma with the uh, C-H-I-P. That's all through the will of the Most High, and it's been preordained from the beginning, and nobody can escape their lots. You've got the pride of these people out here walking around thinking that, oh, I'm, I'm doing me. Everything's by my own will, especially these Edomites. Everybody's in a trick bag, and you, you Edomites are uh, going down the path to your own destruction, which that path was laid out before you by Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, just as the hopeful elect, Abaratazah, Lord willing, I'm of that number, are walking down our preordained path, hopefully seeking salvation. Who governeth the world with the palm of his hand, and all things obey his will, for he is the king of all, by his power, dividing holy things among them from profane. Like I just said, not just our uh, people governed by the will of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, and nature itself, but also the angels as well, and that includes Satan. A lot of people out here, when things go wrong for them, like to say, oh, that was the, that was the devil, that was Satan that did it. And well, it was Satan that did it, but he did it because the Most High gave him the orders to do so. He has no free will. There's no such thing as fallen angels or a war in heaven or, or uh, the Nephilim, which were a mixture of the fallen angels going into the women. That's, that's all just fairy tale bullshit. Everything is preordained. Everything is, is, is uh, follows the will of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. If you can receive it, the Most High creates good and evil all for his purposes uh, a kid is uh skateboarding down the street and gets gunned to death in a gun battle and gets uh, shot to death in a gun battle being at the wrong place at the wrong time that was through the will of the most high he was at the right place at the right time for his judgment and that may seem harsh but like i said a little bit earlier a lot of things we may go through now could be judgments from things we did in our past life and say uh, instances like that take place a baby falls out of a window somebody dies of brain cancer that could be judgments from the most high from something they did in their past life if they lived a so-called good righteous life in this current reincarnation but real quick this is job chapter 4 verse 7 remember i pray thee whoever perished being innocent or where were the righteous cut off? Whoever perished being innocent, everything that takes place out here isn't by random happenstance. It's all through the will of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. And that's also another thing that steadies you and brings peace to your mind. Because in the world, you might've saw somebody in a wheelchair, a burn victim, or a, a, somebody with Down syndrome and felt bad for them. And before you had the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, you may have thought, man, what kind of God would do this? Is there even a God? But then when you understand that there is no free will, and that also, as I said, whoever perished being innocent, and that in your past life, you may be uh, receiving judgment in this life, you, you realize, look, they did something wicked in their past life, so that's why they're here in this lot. That person who could be a cripple could have been a, a mass rapist in their past life. They could have been on the plantation you were in in your past life as a slave, afflicting you. So that's just another peace of mind that is brought to you when you understand 
the scriptures, but without getting too far off topic with free will, just took that little tangent to back up what it says in Deuteronomy where it says the Most High creates good and evil. It's not Satan with his own free will doing anything or anything like that. It's all through the will of the Most High to bring about his judgments, his will. As I said back in that Sirach 18, he governed the world with the palm, in the palm of his hand and everything obeys his will. This is Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 39. See now that I, even I am he, and there is no power, says God there, but no power with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. I kill, I make alive, I wound and I heal everything through the will of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai, good and evil, no free will, nothing happening by happenstance. Take a sip of water real quick. Again, this just brings a, a very calming peace of mind to you because you know that all the mistakes you may have made in the past or things you went through was through the will of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, for whatever his purposes were. And there's nothing you could have done different. And it's much easier said than done. But with that being the case, things that, may have, that didn't play out the way you wanted it to play out in the past, just know there's nothing you could have done about it. It played out exactly how it had to play out through the will of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. You just have to hope that you've been predestinated to be of that elect number. And through the will of the Most High, you're able to endure and keep walking on that straight path, not fall off and be led into judgment and destruction. But even then, knowing that we're Israelites, we know that the kingdom of heaven is coming. And nothing can be done to avert the will of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai from taking place. It's, it's beautiful. But now I'm going to go to Isaiah chapter 45, verse 7. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, Yahweh, do all these things. All the good things in the world that take place as well as all the bad things. World War I, World War II, people getting shot to death, robbed, all that is all through the will of Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, for whatever, whatever the purposes may be. And again, as it said in that Job 4, remember I pray thee, whoever perish being innocent anything that happens to anybody in this life is well deserved because it's through the will of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai and as it said back in uh, that Sirach chapter 18 verse 2 the Lord only is righteous and there is none other but he and what did Yahweh Shai say why call me good the only one that is good is the Most High. Whether it be good or evil, we know that everything that plays out is through a righteous power that can, that can uh, a righteous power for the, the betterment of existence as a whole. So that's another comforting thought. Anything that takes place is ultimately going to have a positive end. And even this wicked society, it had to be set up and we had to go through it to learn wickedness so that when, the, when we're in the kingdom, Hey, we can appreciate righteousness and we're going to know how to govern and rule. But now I'm going to take a, a quick little segue, you know, just showing that not only do we not have free will, but hey, these the angels don't have free will as well. They can only do what the Most High allows them to do. And that includes Satan, who is, hey, at the end of the day, He's a righteous angel as well. 
He's just the left-handed angel of the Most High. And what makes his, him righteous is that he obeys the will of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. This is Job chapter 1. I'm going to start at verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before Yahweh. He's speaking of the angels going before the throne of the Most High. And Satan came also among them. And that right there cuts the whole fallen angels doctrine and, and Satan having a war against the Most High. Because when you go into the, the so-called book of Enoch where it talks about the, the war in heaven and the fallen angels and all that, that took place way before Job according to that book. So if Satan was already cast out of heaven, as they say, then why would he be going with the sons of God before the Most High during Job's time? Just complete madness. Saturday morning cartoon nonsense. But again, Job 1 verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before Yahweh, and Satan came also among them. And Yahweh said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered Yahweh and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And Yahweh said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job? There is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth the Most High and escheweth evil. Verse 9, Then Satan answered Yahweh and said, Doth Job fear the Most High for naught? Has not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. And Yahweh said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. And so Satan made a suggestion to the Most High, but he couldn't act upon that suggestion until the Most High said, Look, all that Job had is in thy power. I'm sanctioning you to be able to do this, showing that Satan had no free will to go afflict Job until the Most High gave him the go-ahead to do so. So Satan went forth from the presence of Yahweh. But now I'm going to jump to uh, verse 2, which just it further hits the nail on the head with that spiritual hammer, showing that nothing out here, even the heavenly angels, don't have free will. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before Yahweh, and Satan came also among them to pre present himself before Yahweh. Slack, yeah. It's one of them days, a little humid out here. But again, Job chapter 2, verse, verse 1. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before Yahweh, and Satan came also among them to pre present himself before Yahweh. And Yahweh said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered Yahweh and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And Yahweh said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth the Most High and escheweth evil? And still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. And what's even trippier about that is even though Satan was given the go-ahead to afflict Job and take his possessions from him. The Most High was still in control and still had that spirit on Job to endure and not curse the Most High. <laughs> the, the Most High is the, is the master 4D chess player. You, in, a, in your vain mind, you may think you have the Most High figured out, but he's not four, five, six, seven, ten moves ahead of you. He's uh, millions of years ahead of you, so to speak. Verse 4, And Satan answered Yahweh and said, Skin for skin, yeah, all that a man hath will he give for his life. But put forth thine hand now, 
and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. And Yahweh said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. Okay. You said, If you take Job's goods away, he'll curse me. But I put the spirit on him not to take, not, but I put the spirit on him not to curse me, even though you took his goods away, which remember, you couldn't do that unless I gave you the go ahead to do so. And then Satan started uh, afflicting Job with boils and, and problems in his flesh. But the Most High kept the spirit on Job to still endure. And Yahweh said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. So went Satan forth from the presence of Yahweh and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. And when you read the book of Job, and Job kept his integrity to the bitter end. And hey, that was through the will of the Most High for him to do so. And this is a, the book of Job is a, is a very powerful story to us as well. Because while, while we know we don't have free will, we just hope that the Most High keeps that spirit on us so we can endure like Job to be of that elect number. And if we endure, what do we get? Hey, being the first fruits in the kingdom of heaven, getting everything a hundredfold but we don't know whether that's our lot or not because again there is no free will so again as I said in Job 33 that takes the pride away from us and constantly keeps us humble following after the ways of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai hoping that the Most High keeps that spirit on us to keep walking in his path But now, I'm going to go to I know it's in Ecclesiastes. Here it is. Ecclesiastes in the Bible, verse uh, chapter 6, verse 13. Consider the works of the Most High. Who can make that straight, which he hath made crooked? And nobody can alter the works of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, especially these Edomites. And the Most High even has a spirit on them to think that they're following after their own purposes and accomplishing their own works. But it's ultimately through the will of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, for them to do that, to fulfill his words, to fulfill his prophecy. And I'm going to get a, an example in 2 Kings, where you had uh, the king of Israel, or the northern kingdom at that time, I believe it was Ahaz, who uh, got a council together to go fight a war. But as we'll see in the account, again, it was through the will of the Most High that he picked his reasoning for going to war and was ultimately judged and put to death. But I'm going to get a one of my favorites. Isaiah 55 verse 11. Shit, I'll start at verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts Neither are your ways my ways, saith Yahweh. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Hey, who are we to question Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai? Us made of uh, earthen vessels of clay who are like the grass, here one day and gone the next. And especially more so when we know that there is no free will. We're all just found the ways of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. And as I said, his ways and his thoughts are mightier and greater than our ways and our thoughts. We're the creation. We're just found the path of the creator. And as I said back in Sirach chapter 18, the Lord only is righteous. A, hey, we know that whatever the purposes are, it's ultimately for the betterment of existence. And we know that everything that's been taking place right now is leading to its ultimate end goal, the kingdom of heaven peace for eternity, eternal dominion and rulership by the children of Israel. Verse 10, 
For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth, and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Again, everything that the Most High has preordained to happen, which you read about in these scriptures, will happen, and nothing will take place to stop prophecy or the words of Yahweh from coming to their fulfillment. But now I'm going to jump to that account in uh, Second Kings. Might be in First Kings. Yeah, here it is. First Kings chapter twenty-two. I'm gonna start at verse one. And like I read in that Ecclesiastes, who can make that straight which the Most High hath made crooked? A Yahweh has set everything in its a. Uh, lot to take place and though you may think you have your own thoughts or going about your own ways it's ultimately through the will of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai which uh, we're about to read about in this account and they continued three years without war between Syria and Israel and it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat the king of Judah came down to the king of Israel and the king of Israel said unto his servants know ye that Ramoth in Gilead is ours, and we be still, and take it not out of the hand of the king of Syria. And he said unto Jehoshaphat, Wilt thou go with me to battle at Ramoth Gilead? And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, I am as thou art, my people as thy people, my horses as thy horses. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of Yahweh today. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 400 men, and said unto them, Shall I go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. So as we can see, I believe that was uh, King Ahaz and uh, the king of Judah at that time, Jehoshaphat. They had it in their mind to go up and take Ramoth Gilead from the Syrians. But as we've been going into with this lesson, there is no free will. The Most High put it in their minds to go up to Ramoth Gilead to fight the Syrians. Let's see what the reasoning for that was. Verse seven, and Jehoshaphat said, is there not here a prophet of Yahweh besides that we might inquire of him? And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man, Micaiah, the son of Imlah, by whom we may inquire of Yahweh. But I hate him, for he doth not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. Then the king of Israel called an officer and said, Hasten hither, Micaiah, the son of Imlah. And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah sat each on his throne, having put on their robes in a void place in the entrance of the gate of Samaria. And all the prophets prophesied before them. And Zedekiah, the son of Chenatnanan, made him horns of iron and said, Thus saith Yahweh, With these shalt thou push the Syrians until thou have consumed them. So all the prophets minus the one that the king of Israel wanted to hear from, Micaiah was saying, look, you're going to go up and win this battle, gassing him up, gassing up his spirit. 
And all the prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper, for Yahweh shall deliver it into the king's hand. And as they, the kings went to the prophets for counsel to hear the words of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. So hearing all these good things, they would think that it was the will of the Most High. Hey, they were going to the Most High in the first place to see whether they would win or lose and base their judgments off of that because they knew that there was no free will but the will of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. And all the prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper, for Yahweh shall deliver it into the king's hand. Verse 13, And the messenger that was gone to call Micaiah spake unto him, saying, Behold now, the words of the prophets declared good unto the king with one mouth. Let thy word, I pray thee, be like the word of one of them, and speak that which is good. And so this messenger that went to get Micaiah said, Look, all the other prophets are saying that the king of Israel and the king of Judah are going to go up and fight the Syrians, say the same thing. But again, who can make that straight, which the Most High hath made crooked? Who can bend their will, bend, use their own will to bend the ways of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai? Even if the prophet Micaiah wanted to agree with those other prophets, Hey, that wasn't the lot that the Most High put him into, as we're about to see. And Micaiah said, As Yahweh liveth, what Yahweh saith unto me, that I will speak, not of my own ways, but of the ways of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. So he came to the king, and the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall we forbear? And he answered him, Go and prosper. For Yahweh shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And the king said unto him, How many times shall I adjure thee that thou tell me nothing but that which is true in the name of Yahweh? So even the king hey, knew he was, he was bullshitting him because Micaiah was the prophet that always gave him bad news. And he wanted to know what the, reason, what the true reasonings of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai was. Verse 17, and he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep that have no shepherd. And Yahweh said, These have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. And so he gave the, the true answer that Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, predestinated in his mind to give. Look, you're going to go up to this battle, but you're going to lose. There's nothing you can do to. to to beat the the Assyrian, the Syrians. Verse 18. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell thee that he would prophesy no good concerning me, but evil? And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of Yahweh. I saw Yahweh sitting on his throne, and all the host of heaven standing by him, on his right hand and on his left hand. Hey, the Most High having a council in heaven with his right-handed angels, uh, the righteous angels, and his left-handed angels, the so-called uh, evil angels, which at the end of the day are righteous as well because they follow the judgments of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. And we'll see, just as Satan went before the Most High and gave a suggestion, hey, those suggestions or actions weren't acted upon until the Most High sanctioned them to be so through His will. Verse 19 again, And He said, Hear thou therefore the word of Yahweh. I saw Yahweh sitting on His throne, and all the host of heaven standing by Him on His right hand and on His left. And Yahweh said, Who shall persuade Ahab? Salaki, it wasn't Ahaz, it was Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead, and one set on this manner, and another set on that manner. So Yahweh already had it in his mind that King Ahab, Ahab would go up to Ramoth Gilead to fight the Syrians, and he would lose. But he was just asking the different angels, hey, what's your, what's your plans? What, what suggestions do you have about the, uh, uh, the best way to go about this? 
though I'm ultimately the one that's gonna pick whatever you're suggesting me to, whatever you're suggesting to me to enact it. And what's even deeper than that, it, hey, as I said, my ways and my thoughts are higher than your ways and your thoughts. If the Most High is in control of everything, he already knew what he was gonna do and put the minds and the opinions of those angels to just, for whatever reason, the Most High wanted to have a council and hear his opinions that he gave to them be brought forth and then pick the one he was ultimately gonna choose, if that makes sense. And Yahweh said, who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner and another said on that manner. And there came forth a spirit and stood before Yahweh and said, I will persuade him. And Yahweh said unto him, wherewith? And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. So earlier in this chapter, when King Ahab went to his, uh, his prophets and they all said he was going to win the battle, as we just saw, it was uh, the Most High that took that suggestion of that angel to put a lying spirit on his prophets and used it on those prophets so they could puff Ahab up and make him think he was going to go win this battle. But it was ultimately so the Most High can enact judgment on King Ahab so he could go to that battle and get killed. Like I was talking about a little bit earlier in the video, the Most High has his reasonings for doing everything. Situations play out either for your betterment and to continue in the truth and build up your spirit and strengthen Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai or for your uh, judgment and destruction and to lead you down the path to take you out of the truth. We just hope that our predetermined lot is that of the elect. But let's see what happens. Now, therefore, behold, Yahweh hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets, and Yahweh hath spoken evil concerning thee. But Zedekiah, the son of Chana'ana, went near and smote Micaiah on the cheek and said, which way went the spirit of Yahweh from me to speak unto thee? And Micaiah said, Behold, thou shalt see in that day when thou shalt go into an inner chamber to hide thyself. And the king of Israel said, Take Micaiah and carry him back unto Ammon, the governor of the city, and Joash, the king's son, and say, Thus saith the king, Put this fellow in the prison and feed him with bread of affliction and with water of affliction, until I come in peace. And Micaiah said, If thou return at all in peace, Yahweh hath not spoken by me. And he said, Hearken, O people, every one of you. Let me see. I'm going to jump around a little bit. I'll keep reading down. Verse 29. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat the king of Judah went up to Ramoth Gilead and the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and enter into the battle, but put thou on thy robes. And the king of Israel disguised himself and went into the battle. But the king of Syria commanded his 30 and two captains that had rule over his chariots, saying, fight neither with small nor great, save only with the king of Israel. And it came to pass when the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat that they said, Surely it is the king of Israel. And they turned aside to fight against him. And Jehoshaphat cried out. So, hey, the Most High put the spirit on uh, the king of Syria and his, his troops to see through King Ahab's disguise and know where he was and go directly towards him, showing they had no free will as well. Hey, mosquitoes. And it came to pass when the captains of the chariots perceived that it was not the king of Israel, that they turned back from pursuing him. Slocky, I messed up a little bit. So they, just to correct myself, King Ahab told King Jehoshaphat to disguise himself. 
slack and I'm going to read. Okay, so the king of Jehoshaphat was wearing his, his regular kingly attire to go to battle, but King Ahab disguised himself so he didn't look like a king. And when the Syrians saw Jehoshaphat, they thought he was Ahab, so they went to, to kill him, but then they realized it wasn't King Ahab, so turned turn back to try to find King Ahab. And it came to pass when the captains of the chariots perceived that it was not the king of Israel that they turned back from pursuing him. And a certain man drew a bow at venture and smote the king of Israel between the joints of the harness. Wherefore he said unto the driver of his chariot, Turn thine hand and carry me out of the host, for I am wounded. I'm going to jump down to verse 37. So the king died and was brought to Samaria, and they buried the king in Samaria. It's a point blank period. Through that whole account, we saw that, I got him, we saw that King Ahab went to his prophets and they said, you're going to win the battle, so go out and fight against the king of Syria. But he went to the prophets to inquire what the Most High would say, because he knows that everything's through the will of the Most High. But when we went further down into the account, we saw that the Most High had a council and uh, the angel that made the suggestion to put that lion spirit on those prophets, his suggestion was taken and the Most High used it to ultimately deceive King Ahab and bring him to his judgment, to his death. So again, as we've been going through with these precepts and in this lesson, there is no free will. Everything is preordained, predestinated through the will of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, and nothing can be done to step out of our lot, we have to go through it. And the only thing we can hope for is that we are of that elect number. And again, like King David said, and was praying that the spirit was not taken off of us, that it's not our lot for the spirit to be taken off of us and we get destroyed with the wicked of our people. All right, let me see. I get a one more uh, precept just dealing with showing that the angels have no free will. Shit, nothing has free will. And then I'll uh, get into where is it at? Might be in Sirach. Here it is. This is uh, Ecclesiasticus of Sirach, chapter 16. I'm going to start at verse 26. The works of the Lord are done in judgment from the beginning, and from the time he made them, he disposed the parts thereof. He garnished his works forever, and in his hand are the chief of them unto all generations. They neither labor nor are weary, nor cease from their works. This is talking about the angels that uh, do the bidding of the Most High and hear his will and go and act his judgments, moving everything in its right place to fulfill the will of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Verse 28, none of them hindereth another and they shall never disobey his word, point blank period. And just like everything on earth follows the will of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, all the angels do as well including Satan, who has no free will. And we just read, hey, in Job, 
as well as in uh, 1 Kings chapter 22, that the angels cannot do anything or uh, their plans cannot get enacted unless it's through the will of the Most High who sanctions them. And then at the end of the day, like I just said, the Most High's uh, ways and thoughts are not our ways and thoughts. He put those those opinions into the angels and had them come up to him and uh, give him those opinions just so he could pick the plan he was already going to enact. It's crazy. That's it with that. But like I was also saying a little bit earlier, hey, the ways of these Edomites who are currently in rulership, more specifically the elites, are all through the will of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai as well. Everything they're doing, they, they can't help but do it to fulfill prophecy and bring about their own destruction. And you would think somebody, because best believe they understand the scriptures and can see that these prophecies are coming to their fulfillment and see that the men of the Lord are prophesying their downfall. You would think that they would do everything in their power to stop the karagma from coming out and uh, to try not to fulfill their NW0 or afflict the children of Israel, but they can't. They have to follow their path and fulfill prophecy. Again, who can make that straight which the Most High hath made crooked? This is Proverbs chapter 21, verse 1. The king's heart or mind is in the hand of Yahweh. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithsoever he will. The king's mind is in the hand of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Again, these elites. And like the courses of the water, he turneth it whithsoever he will. The Most High leads them into these into, into their predetermined paths to fulfill prophecy, which is ultimately leading to their destruction. Take a sip of water real quick. lucky if I seem a, a little bit all over the place I was gonna go into a little bit more on how the kings of the earth don't have their own free will but it, it just it just clicked into my mind to go into a another topic dealing with the fact that there's no free will just the fact that uh everybody's lot has been predetermined from the beginning that the Edomites would be the wicked and be destroyed and there's nothing they can do about it and that the Israelites were uh predetermined to be the righteous and to uh, have salvation and there's nothing that they can do about it. But this is a uh, Sirach chapter 33. I'm going to start at verse 10. All men are made from the ground and Adam was created of earth. In much knowledge, the Lord hath divided them and made their ways diverse. Some of them hath he blessed and exalted, and some of them hath he sanctified and set near to himself. Hey, the sons of God, the children of Israel, so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. But some of them hath he cursed and brought low and turned out of their places. The sons of the wicked, these Edomites, are so-called white people. As the clay is in the potter's hand to do to fashion it at his pleasure, however he wants to make it, so man is in the hand of him that made him to render to them as liketh him best. Point blank period. The Most High has created everything to be in its own lot, in a balance it to everything good versus evil, light versus dark, you name it. But at the end of the day, Again, it's through the will of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. I form the light and create darkness. I kill, kill, and I heal. I, uh, it is I that do all these things. That's it with that. And now I'm going to go to...
Romans chapter 9. Let me see where I'm going to start. I'll start at verse 11. As we just read in Sirach 33, the Most High hath created a good against evil, some to be exalted and be righteous, and some to be cursed and brought low. Everybody's lot has been preordained. And this account's about to go into a Jacob and Esau, how Jacob was formed to be the righteous and Esau was formed to be the wicked and be punished and ultimately destroyed. And this all happened before they were even conceived in the womb. It took place at the beginning when the Most High started setting out how he wanted this story to play out, how he wanted his will to be fulfilled. For the children, being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of the Most High, according to election, might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth, not of works. Hey, we can't do anything. We can't work. We can uh, make ourselves the elect or do whatever do whatever we want. Hey, it's of him that calleth. It's through the will of the Most High that set everything in place. We can just pray and hope that our lot is that of the elect. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with the Most High? Most High forbid, back in that Sirach 18, only the Lord is righteous.